Let's talk about what causes uh, type 1 hypersensitivities or what leads to these allergies in some individuals. So it's a combination of genetics, environment, and bad luck. So what do we mean by these? So for someone to generate a type 1 hypersensitivity, that means they have IgE that recognizes an allergen. So where does IgE come from? This means that there's a naive B cell that was in their body that bound the allergen. So that means they must have had VDJ recombination occurring in their heavy and light chain to make an antigen binding site that bound the allergen. Is this rare? Well, it's probably not that rare. Probably all of us can make antibodies to peanut proteins or pollen proteins because VDJ recombination, junctional diversity, combinations of light and heavy chains, uh, these can give rise to billions of different of antigen binding sites. So it's actually not surprising that uh, we can make antibodies to allergens because, in fact, we want to be able to make antibodies to anything that is pathogenic, any virus molecule, any bacterial molecule, any parasitic molecule. So it's really not a surprise that uh, people can generate antibodies to non-pathogenic molecules. In fact, we can generate antibodies to almost any type of molecule. But individuals who have an allergy, type 1 allergy, um, first have to have a naive B cell that makes a um, antigen binding site on their B cell receptor that binds the allergen. Secondly, they're going to need to present peptides to T cells in order for that B cell to activate. So this requires um, MHC class 2 antigen presentation. So some individuals, and this is where we talk about genetics, um, inherit HLA alleles that are really good at presenting peptides from these allergens. So if you are uh, more likely to present peanut peptides or uh, pollen peptides on your MHC molecules, MHE2 specifically, then you are more likely to uh, give the B cell permission to uh, isotype switch and activate in order to make IgE. So part of the part of this is genetics. Um, for a B cell, an a B cell to uh, activate an isotype switch from making IgM and IgD to IgE, uh, you're going to need permission from a CD4 T cell, which means that T cell will have to have a T cell receptor that binds that peanut peptide or that pollen peptide. So again, another series of bad luck, a uh, series of bad luck where uh, individuals who had VDG recombination in their TCR alpha and beta genes, such that they now make an antigen binding site that binds a peanut peptide or a um, pollen peptide. So you need that to occur in order to signal to the B cell to switch to making IgE. Again, recall that um, the effector T cell that um, makes this happen is a TH2 effector T cell. And the differentiation of helper T cells into TH2 and for B cells to isotype switch involve the cytokine IL-4. So when IL-4 binds the IL-4 receptor, um, this is gonna help trigger this um, pathway. Some individuals inherit versions of the IL-4 gene or the IL-4 receptor gene that make them more susceptible to this process. So if you're genetically susceptible to making more IgE than the normal person, then you are more likely to have a type 1 hypersensitivity. Uh, finally, some individuals uh, inherit a version of the gene uh, genes required to make the FC epsilon receptor 1, which make their mast cells more sensitive to uh, IgE. And if your mast cells are more sensitive to IgE, you're going to have more degranulation um, and these symptoms. So part of this is a series of bad luck uh, in terms of VDJ recombination. Part of it's genetics uh, in terms of the alleles that you inherit can make some individuals more susceptible to producing IgE against allergens. Um, let's talk about the environment, the role in the environment, which uh, um, comes down to what's called the hygiene hypothesis. And there's some evidence that suggests 
that the environment that individuals live in can uh, help trigger type 1 hypersensitivities. And a lot of this hypothesis is based on the fact that countries where parasitic infections are common, in those areas, uh, type 1 hypersensitivities are very rare. So in those uh, environments, uh, children are exposed to uh, parasitic worms at a young age, and their B cells and their Th2 cells and their mast cells are involved in generating IgE against parasites, which is the normal function of these cells. Whereas in countries that have um, fewer uh, parasitic infections because of clean drinking water, clean food, uh, access to hygiene and medicine, in those countries where parasitic infections are very rare, that's where you tend to find more and more hypersensitivity, specifically type 1 hypersensitivity. It is believed that in those, the reason for this is that these cells um, don't have anything to do. They don't have any parasites to attack. So instead of making IgE against parasites, they start making IgE against environmental proteins such as peanuts or pollen or cat dander. So um, it's suggested that these uh, cells are poorly educated uh, during um, youth, and they start making IgE against non-pathogenic molecules because they don't have any uh, worms to attack. There's some evidence to support this because uh, there are anecdotal studies and clinical trials going on showing that you can actually take individuals with allergies, which is type 1 hypersensitivities, and actually infect them with parasites. So some individuals purposely infect themselves with worms. And what that seems to do is actually direct their B cells, at least two cells, mast cells, to make IgE against the parasites. And that uh, reduces the production of IgE against the allergens. So some individuals have been able to successfully treat their type 1 hypersensitivities by infecting themselves with worms. Sounds very interesting. There, like I said, there are a number of clinical trials going on to um, see if this is a reasonable um, treatment for uh, type 1 hypersensitivities. Uh, <clears throat> other pieces of evidence that back up this hypothesis is that children who um, grow up on a farm um, or children who go to daycare at a young age are less likely to have these type 1 hypersensitivities. So it is uh, suggested that exposure at a young age to pathogens, possibly parasites, but also maybe viruses or bacteria, um, the, uh, either in a daycare environment or being out on in uh, the rural areas, um, exposing children to pathogens at a young age um, would direct the the cells, B cells, mast cells, and Th2 cells to fight pathogens and not fight, try to fight allergens. So individuals who go to daycare or grow up in rural areas less likely to have these type 1 hypersensitivities. So again, this is some data supporting the hygiene hypothesis. Um, treatments for allergies, um, it is possible, and it's being studied um, very much right now, uh, it's possible that you can re-educate the immune system to stop making uh, IgE against an allergen. So you direct the uh, cells to change their um, attack against the allergen. So when B cells make IgE against an allergen, you're going to get mast cell degranulation and um, a type 1 reaction. So there is some evidence that you can convince the uh, immune system to switch to making another antibody isotype called IgEG4 against an allergen. So we're still making antibodies against an allergen, but now we're making a different isotype. And this isotype will overtake the IgE isotype. And if that occurs, then um, you are less likely to get mast cell degranulation in exposure uh, to the allergen. So this involves exposing patients to small amounts of allergen in a very controlled setting and um, trying to redirect the immune system to not make IgE against the molecule, but now make IgG4 against the molecule. And what will this do? Maybe it will compete uh, for the allergen. 
um, and that's one way that uh, it would prevent mast cell degranulation. I mean, if you have memory B cells that are making IgE, uh, will the allergy ever really go away? Well, I mean, some people do uh, have their allergies uh, um, be reduced uh, over time, um, and it is possible that it is due to um, those cells that are making IgE uh, no longer producing those antibodies, or other cells are producing antibodies against the allergen, and that is um, preventing IgE from binding them and preventing mast cell degranulation. So there's a lot more uh, research that needs to go on in this area, but I thought I would talk a little bit about um, what's going on in terms of what we know, uh, in terms of treatment and causes of uh, hypersensitivity type 1.